semiconductors have become this essential commodity powering nearly every aspect of modern day life right and in right. particular semiconductor manufacturing has become top of mind conversation you know if you're talking to members in government or you know officials working in the tech industry so you've been part of this industry for a very long time so just start by telling us how has working in this industry changed you know pre covid versus post covid because covid really seemed like that inflection point when the whole world suddenly realized that you know we need a much more diversified semiconductor supply chain absolutely i think before covid uh, at or during covid uh, before covid there was a market difference to the way we approach stuff right or, the, or rather the way people looked at us uh, before that we were considered a bunch of hobbyists you know don't know what we, what these guys are up to types right and that was the overall perception of the semiconductor industry and it was it was a enterprise industry behind the scenes not much uh, not much consumer facing stuff i mean of course people did use cars and phones which uh, which and practically everything in the world runs on semiconductors and electronics today. but they never knew uh, uh, anything behind the roots so to speak uh, what happened in covid is people began to realize the consumer began to realize that because of the just in time supply chains and uh, issues of uh, you know disruptions of global supply chains uh, there were shortages of semiconductors for i think the first one was for cars right so people had to had a long waiting times to get cars because uh, the semiconductors automotive semiconductors were uh, delayed because of uh, uh, because of supply chain issues at the fab and fab capacity and stuff like that and that's when the the realization dawned in that yeah the run all your cool apps on your you know cars or on your phones and stuff like that you also need semiconductors and because of the geopolitics at, at that time that played out uh, india really began to focus on semiconductors as a as a key and a strategic cog in our uh, in our uh, vision for the vikshit bharat for 2047 right but if you if you look at the world uh, pre 2020 and then post 2020 a lot of attention has has gone into this space right like suddenly governments have realized that look we definitely need a much more diversified supply chain particularly when it comes to uh, fa- the foundry business right the manufacturing of semiconductors but when you look at the fabless ecosystem not much attention has gone into that space right is it because the fabless ecosystem is pretty well diversified in itself right like i think in the past you mentioned that india has you know a pretty strong fabless design eco- fabless uh, semiconductor ecosystem the united states also has a very good fabless ecosystem there are many companies in europe as well that are doing really well in the fabless design ecosystem so why is it that not much attention given to the fabless design ecosystem compared to the manufacturing ecosystem people see see china's uh, growth trajectory right and there has been a lot of focus on and china grew on the back of a, a manufacturing uh, base that got built up and that manufacturing was electronic manufacturing a lot of people a lot of times people confuse between electronic manufacturing and semiconductor manufacturing right so the thought process was that you know uh, you, you know uh, electronic manufacturing is going to generate a lot of jobs and therefore uh, potentially you know the semiconductor manufacturing will also uh, you know uh, generate a lot of jobs uh, and also create a strong industrial base for the country so that i think was the fundamental argument and also the strategic geopolitical reasons right you wanted you you had a single point of failure uh, in you know, in tsmc and to geographically concentrate in a very small region and uh, the supply chain had to be diversified and that's why you wanted to build that from our own strategic perspective you need to have a fab because there are areas like defense and military and space where you probably have to build your own chips sorry design your own chips and build them and manufacture them. and you don't want any external dependencies but uh, fabless uh, wasn't as glamorous at that time and that uh, and see you are as good as the issues that you see at that time right mm. so media was not what in media is today so uh, largely if you look at from a value creation perspective the fabless ecosystem generates far more value than a fab mm. right and uh, right. also uh, on the from the fab perspective i think the idea was you first create capacity uh, look at the supply side problems and then start to go fill in the demand right mm. uh, that was the, probably the the strategy that was followed and that's the reason all the thing all the attention and fixation towards uh, 
semiconductor manufacturing came about in 2020 because that was the problem at that time. But if you see since then, all the five, all the trillion dollar companies, uh, uh, Nvidia, starting with Nvidia, they are all fabulous companies, right? And mm. fundamentally, India has always thrived in design. Uh, every other other chip that is designed in the world has a Bangalore stamp on it, or maybe Hyderabad to an extent, but mostly Bangalore. So the design, the the talent to build chips, uh, sorry, design chips exists in India outside of the valley. We probably Bangalore is the biggest uh, ecosystem for VLSI engineers, VLSI IC design engineers, right? Uh, so probably it, it is also you know uh, in, in in some sense garki uh, dal barabar types, right? I don't know, I mean, then the loose analogy, but it, it, it is already there. The mm. problem over even fabulous world has been that we have not been able to build local companies. There's a mm. lot of talent, but there hasn't been a local leader that has actually. Uh, taken all of this talent together, built a product and pushed it out. So if you look at China and if you look at even Taiwan, well, TSMC started off its journey uh, to build build fabs. There was also a very strong, vibrant design ecosystem, even in Taiwan. The media mm. techs and uh, the, the morning stars and there's a whole bunch of other companies that actually sprouted and uh, because of, uh, you know, in parallel to uh, TSMC, right? Uh, and I, I, I strongly believe that there's a lot of value creation that can happen in the fabulous stuff. Uh, we practically import what? Minus the fab, we import about 200 or 300 billion dollars of uh, uh, you know, semiconductors, chipsets, or even more, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not very good with those numbers, but they're a box, right? So from fans to microcontroller to, you know, to air conditioners, to TVs, to phones, Set of boxes, television, what have you? Cars, aircraft, everything actually needs uh, needs a, a, a chip. And these chips are provided by, uh, like you said, a far more diversified set of companies. But even there, there are some single points of failure. Like for example, AI. Uh, you know, practically everybody relies on Nvidia, but uh, there are other companies that are trying to come up, but uh, they are not. They are not being able to break that monopolist. So if you are able to actually go build these fabulous companies. I think there is more value we can add and also reduce uh, our import burden by quite a lot. Take the mobile phone itself, right? Uh, mm. Where we have uh, taken some strides towards indigenizing manufacturing in India. Not a single component still actually uh, uh, is Indian in there. Right? We, are, we are doing value-added manufacturing, maybe some basic uh, I would say basic uh, mechanical stuff and stuff like that get that. But by and large, none of the electronic components, uh, electronic components are made in India. Uh, 